We begin this morning with the top story on everyone's mind, the race for a COVID vaccine. We are even launching a special series this week. We're covering every angle for you because it can't come soon enough. I'm sure we all agree. So here's what you need to know. Today is a critical day. The CDC's Vaccine Advisory Committee will meet to decide who should get vaccinated first with healthcare workers a top priority. There are six promising vaccine candidates. Two are already under consideration by the FDA for emergency authorization. So once approved, the military, as we understand it, is handling distribution. And we do know the vaccine will be free. But of course, the big question this morning, when will it all start? How will it change our lives? For that, we turn to NBC medical contributor, Dr. Ben Gupta. He's been treating COVID patients really since the beginning of the pandemic. And CNBC's senior health and science reporter, Meg Terrell, is also here. Good morning to both of you. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, Dr. Gupta, let me start with you. As we mentioned, the FDA is now scrutinizing data on two possible vaccines. How soon will we see a vaccine once they give their official stamp of approval? Good morning, Chanel. We're expecting that hopefully about 20 million to 50 million doses, depending on uh, which vaccines get approved. If both get approved, Moderna and Pfizer's in this calendar year might be available to Americans by the end of this calendar year. At the point at which most Americans will actually receive a vaccine or will be eligible for it, I suspect, end of uh, late spring. So uh, we're looking sometime in the March, April timeframe when most Americans will start getting seeing access to it. And then by the beginning of the summer season, June into July, hopefully anybody who wants a vaccine can get a vaccine. Mm -hmm. So, Dr. Gupta, there's been this debate about who gets the vaccine first. What, what's the latest thinking on that? Al, you know, we're going to have greater clarity on that today with this advisory group that's meeting and to give guidance on that to the CDC. But I suspect it's going to be those who are at high risk for exposure. So healthcare workers, frontline healthcare workers, hopefully we broaden that definition so we uh, conceive of uh, other essential, essential frontline workers like teachers and grocery store clerks in that rubric. There's many others. Um, and then also uh, residents of congregant living facilities, so nursing home facility workers and residents. Those are going to be, I, I think, the top two groups here that will receive the vaccine first. Meg, let's bring you in here as someone who really knows the business of vaccines. What can we realistically expect once the immunization process actually starts? And I'm hearing there's talk about a vaccine passport. What is that? Yeah, so this is this kind of futuristic idea where we actually have uh, a requirement to get a certificate of wow. vaccination before we can do things. So as Dr. Gupta was talking about, it's going to be a while before most of us can get a vaccine. It's going to be the most high risk groups at the beginning because of limited supply. And then folks like Dr. Fauci are talking about spring and summer for everybody really being able to get access. And so then what does life start to look like? Do we have to have that certificate of vaccination before getting on a cruise ship or getting on on a plane, for example. Experts I've talked with say that is a possibility. But what about like going to concerts or going to a restaurant? Would you need a certificate of vaccination to do that? That might be less likely, but companies like Ticketmaster are already thinking about ideas like that. Could they have a technology, for example, to link your concert ticket to proof that you've been vaccinated? So these are the kinds of things that are getting talked about. None of it is set in stone yet, but experts are saying we should think about these things, what life is going to be like with vaccines. And they are warning that even as more of us get vaccinated, we're still going to have to wear masks and socially distance for a lot of next yeah, year. Yeah, no surprise there. I know you've been talking, Meg, with a lot of experts. Have you talked to anybody about, you know, will we, able be, will we be able to choose which vaccine we get? That's been a big question. Yeah, so at the beginning, probably not just because supply is going to be so limited. It's going to be take what you can get whenever you can get it. But if this turns into a vaccine we have to take every year, like the flu shot, or maybe every couple years, by then there will probably be enough supply that, like the flu shot, there will be different options we can choose from. For the flu shot, there's a high dose version for people over 65, there's a nasal spray. Mm. There are different options, and you can actually call your pharmacy and make sure they've got the one you want before you go in. So down the line, we could see that for COVID vaccines, but at the beginning, it's going to be take what you can get. Mm. Hey, Dr. Gupta, there was a, a kind of a, what I thought was kind of a disturbing poll from the American Association of Nurses revealing that only 36% said that they would get vaccinated. And I've got to imagine that extends out into the general population. As, and as we've heard, it's not the vaccine, it's vaccinations. Is, is that going to be a problem going forward? 
You know, I'll, I suspect that once we have the data actually publicly available, once uh, this advisory group of external experts uh, levies their decisions and says that the vaccines are effective, very effective in some cases, and broadly safe, that that, that number is going to change. You're going to see broader adoption. I know all of us uh, in healthcare, clinicians, public health experts are eager to see the data because we want a message on the data and say the data uh, is is promising. Not only are we interested in getting the vaccine, getting immunized, but you should to to, to all Americans out there. So I do think that number is is subject to change, Al, because everybody really wants this vaccine to work. And Meg, I'm sure businesses just want to get back up and running the way they used to. Do you think they'll require employees to get COVID vaccines? So there is talk about that, but it could be pretty complicated to do. So here's the thing. It's not illegal, but there could be a lot of challenges to it. We do know that, you know, with things like the flu shot now, especially for healthcare workers, a lot of places do mandate an annual flu shot and other shots like the hepatitis B vaccine. And, and of course, for schools and daycares, mm -hmm. often vaccinations are mandated as well. But there are always exemptions for medical or religious reasons. And especially for a new vaccine like the COVID vaccine, there could be more challenges. But employers are talking about either considering mandating it or at least making it as easy as possible for their employees to get a vaccine, perhaps by even having them on site if that's possible down the road. Definitely new territory for all of us. Meg Terrell, Dr. Van Gupta, as always, thank you for your time this morning. It's a busy time. Thank you. And stay with us here on NBC all week for more from our special series, Race for a Vaccine.